Hey guys, Dee Dee here, how are we all doing? I hope you're doing well. So today's video, I thought I would do an in-depth guide on how to take care of your jewel orchids. So I know I've touched a little bit on the care of jewel orchids before, but I thought I'd go like, you know, dive deep and get into how to actually care for them. So I do want to make the disclaimer, there are many species of jewel orchids. So the ones that I'll be talking about are the more common ones that you can get, so the ones that I actually have and have experience with. So that will be the Macadese Petola, the Lodicea, so I have the Lodicea Discolor Alba. Uh, we've got the Anectochylus, we have another, oh my god I forgot what this is again. <laughs> Is this an Anectochylus or is this a Lodicea? I don't remember. This one and then my newest one, the Aspidoni. As Aspido yep. The one that I don't know how to pronounce. Uh, obviously I don't have as much experience with this one as I just got it, but I, you know, I have all these other ones that I have experience with. So I'll be talking mainly about those because, you know, jewel orchids, it, like I said, they're this, it, it's a huge species. There are many, many jewel orchids out there and there are some, you know, very rare and that have a little bit kind of different care from the ones you know, the, these ones that I have anyway. <laughs> so yeah, take what I say with a pinch of salt. Also, you know, we all do live in different environments. So I, what I'm gonna be saying in this video is like what's worked for me and what's worked for my environment. So if you can take the information that I give you and kind of adapt it to your environment, then you know, that's great. <laughs> so yeah, you know, try, try and take what I say with a bit of, you know, pinch of salt and try again, try to adapt it to your own environment. What differentiates jewel orchids from normal orchids? So if you know, normal orchids, as in like, you know, your, your Phalaenopsis orchids and things like that, they are usually epiphytic. They usually grow in like the nooks and the crannies of trees and they don't grow in any type of medium. Whereas jewel orchids are actually terrestrial and they are also rhizomatous and that means that they grow usually on the floor. So they, they grow along the floor of like rainforests, of woodlands, and sometimes I think in mountainous regions, and they spread through rhizomes. So they crawl along the ground horizontally. And by terrestrial, it means that they need a substrate to grow in. So they need some kind of medium to grow in. They can't just, you know, grow off the air seemingly like, you know, normal Phalaenopsis orchids do. So yeah, that's the difference. I guess the other difference is that they're just so much more pretty, as in to look at, just in general, because you know, Phalaenopsis orchids, when they're not in bloom, even any other orchid really that's not in bloom, you just kind of have boring green foliage to look at. Whereas these, you know, it's all about the foliage. The flowers, yeah, you know, they're all right, but it's mainly the foliage that you know, we want to focus on and, and look at and enjoy so much. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is lighting. Where should you keep your jewel orchids? So if you can, if you think about where they grow in the environment that they usually grow in, it's either, you know, like in a forest or a, like I said, a woodland, it's usually under trees. So it will be dappled filtered light. So I keep mine in a bright indirect lighting situation. So I have them about, ooh, how, how, how many meters would we say it's? Like a meter and a half? Maybe like a meter? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not, good, I'm not good with like judging distance, but I'd say about a meter away from the south facing window. And one half of like the shelf that I have has like really good light from one of the windows that I have and the other half is kind of in shade, it, it's really dark. And so I actually do supplement my lighting with a grow light. So I do have it on a south facing window with a grow light. So. This one and my Aspen, the, <laughs> the, the Aspido, Aspidoni grow under my grow light. I used to have this one under a grow light, but I kind of moved that more towards the window. And as you can see, like, you yeah, know, it, it's, it's, it's getting a bit crazy. You do not want these guys to really get any kind of full sun exposure because if they do get any full sun exposure, they will burn. And I actually made that mistake with these two when I first got them. I had them under the grow light, but I had them a bit too close to the grow light and I scorched a few of their leaves and sometimes when you scorch them really bad, you know, they'll just die and fall off. So I did actually have that on the lower leaves, which is why, I don't know if you guys can see, sorry, the bowl's kind of gross, but you can see it's like a, a stick because I did, there was more leaves at the bottom, but they did get scorched and now I'm not sure if this has pests or not, but you know, that's a different story for a different time. <laughs> so if you don't have a southern facing window, I would suggest like an east facing window. A west facing window would be good, but if you live somewhere where it gets very hot in the summer, because west facing windows tend to get, you know, afternoon sun, it might not be a great idea because obviously afternoon sun is a lot more hot than morning sun in an east facing window. So 
you know, bear that in mind if you do want to keep them in a west facing window. But yeah, east, south, probably not a north, I don't know if they'd get enough light or not. I, I've never grown it in a north facing window, but yeah. Just again, think of where they come from and that should give you an idea as to what kind of lighting situation you should have them in. These guys, like I said, are rhizomatous and they like to grow, uh, you know, horizontally. So the kind of pots that I have them in probably aren't the best ones. You probably want to look for kind of like a bonsai type pot, you know, like a square pot and, and long and quite shallow. But their roots don't go very deep, so you don't want something, you know, too shallow and then you also don't want it too deep. A bonsai pot would be really good if you can get your hands in it. Obviously I don't at the moment because it's it's really hard to find square planters like I'm not even gonna lie <laughs> it, it's hard or even if you could get like a nice you know really kind of big bowl um and a shallow bowl that would also really work you know so that they could slowly creep along so obviously I have them all in kind of nursery pots at the moment this obviously is in like a fish bowl I just put it in here for like aesthetic reasons because I just, you know, I was like, it's going to look really good. Ignore the dead plant inside, um, fail, my, a fail, I, I, I just, yeah, <laughs> again, another story. You know, they are, I don't know if I can get in close. If you can see inside the bowl, the Macadese Patola is already kind of, you know, starting to do that creep along along and sending up, you know, new shoots. The Lodicea is also doing that. The new shoot isn't doing anything, it's like really tiny, <laughs> so I don't know that you'll be able to see it. But it too is also starting to creep, so, you know, it's gone across this way and it's sent up a runner, this one's gone across this way, sent up a runner, and maybe, you know, it'll continue. So this kind of bowl shape does work, but obviously, as they grow bigger, I will have to find something a bit bigger to put them in. If you're dealing with like, you know, small kind of plants, obviously yes, you can put them in a circular pot, no problem until, you know, they get big enough that you're starting to see things and, you know, like this. This is, as you can see, this one's starting to creep along this way. So eventually I will actually have to get a bigger, you know, like a wider pot for it to grow in. There are many soil mixes out there that you can use and the mix will change depending on your environment, how you water and the pot you have it in. So if you have it in a terracotta pot then you know that will wick out moisture or allow more oxygen you might have to water more often or you know if you're in a hot and humid environment again you might want something like a clay pot or if you're in a really cold environment in like a, you know like we are in the UK you might want to put them in a plastic pot so again the mix that you use will depend on all of those factors if you look at where jewel orchids like naturally grow they all usually grow in kind of like leaf mold the debris that you find underneath trees and that's what they enjoy so it's very airy it's very light it's not you know, dense, they don't actually grow like in soil. I have three different mixtures that I'm kind of using at the moment, but the main mix that I use is sphagnum moss, perlite, charcoal, bark, small and medium grade bark, and a little bit of potting soil, and sometimes a little bit of cocoa core. This one that I have is cocoa core, perlite, and bark, really big bark chips, the orchid bark chips, and it seems to be doing really well in this. Uh, this one, I think, is just spag, perlite, and bark. Yeah, okay, I put a little bit of, a little bit of cocoa core in this. This one's in a lot more of a, a sphagnum mixture. These guys, I have more of, like, you know, a proper mix of sphag, soil, perlite, and charcoal, and bark. <laughs> so yeah, this one I have a mixture of, like, all of it together, and again, it's doing really well. These mixes work really well for me in that they retain moisture, and I don't have to water them all the time, and they like that. They like to have moisture. If they don't want something dense, like, do not just pot these guys in soil, because that will be too heavy for them, unless you amend that soil very, very well with like a lot of perlite and a lot of bark so that it's very airy. You want the water to kind of just psh, right through. It's not a great idea just to plant these in soil. You do want to definitely amend your soil with things. You don't want to give your plant root rot. So it's definitely a good idea if you can amend your soil as much as you can with like perlite and bark. Now saying that, you can just grow these guys in like pure sphagnum moss. So I had pretty much, yeah, like these two came to me like, you know, in a little pot of sphagnum moss and that's just how it's growing. So you can just leave it in that for as long as you want and then, you know, once it starts to grow, get a bit bigger, then you can just, you know, refresh the sphagnum moss and if that works for you. But I just find sphagnum moss is really good. It does retain moisture, but I find that 
if you know it's really hot or you have your plants under like a grow light that the sphagnum can dry out very quickly and so you have to water them a lot more often and obviously you know they are little plants little plants do require a lot more care but you know it, it gets to a point sometimes you're just like uh, <laughs> have to water you again nope so you know make your decisions but yeah do not pot these guys straight into soil definitely amend your soil that is the biggest like tip that I can give you guys. Now this will vary again depending on your environment. I know I've said that so much but it is different for everyone and again it will change if you're using clay pot versus a non-clay pot. So I can't tell you how often to water at the moment with the setup I have. I'm watering these guys especially a lot more. I'm not sure why but they seem to be using a lot more water than my, these guys so these guys I'm watering probably every five to seven days these guys probably every ten ten days ish they don't like to dry out I'm not gonna lie to you guys I have I think it was this one and, and these two I have let them dry out kind of not fully but they dried out about 60 70 percent and then I've been like oh crap you know and I, I've watered them don't make that a habit though because you know it puts stress on them and they don't like it so much so Definitely, you know, keep on top of making sure that that medium is moist. When I say moist and not soggy, it kind of means, like, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced, like, morning dew. If you've gone out in the garden and you've seen morning dew, that's, like, moist. So if you just think of that, <laughs> so if you stick your finger, like, in the substrate, this is, yeah, and you can see there's some, like, there's stuff that's come off of my finger from the substrate that means that it's still moist it's it's that good level I don't need to give it any water this one I did just water like two days ago so again I can feel the sphagnum it's moist and this one because it's more of a barky mixture I just look you know I can kind of like dig in here in the middle and again you can see stuff's coming off of my finger that means it doesn't need water so those are ways to tell when your plants need water uh, but again, just, you know, check on them, make sure, and how to water. I, you know, have this little watering can, I will just go in and, you know, a little bit at a time, and, you know, I'll see how wet it is. So, you know, I'll do a little bit of a water check to see how moist it is, if it needs more, if it needs less. These two guys, I bottom water. I get a saucer, you know, just put some water in it, let it sit in there like that until it's absorbed you know the sphag on the top is moist again like I said I can't really give you like a timeline on when to water just make sure that you check ideally it should be kind of every seven days but it will change depending again on your environment what pot you have and what potting media that you put your jewels in so your temperature needs to be fairly warm again a lot of these species do come from kind of like Asia tropical regions they do appreciate warm temperatures they don't want anything kind of below 10 degrees because you know that that's cold <laughs> even to me that's cold so to these guys it'd be really cold it will stress them out it can kill them so definitely you know like I've said this so many times before if you're comfortable your plants will be comfortable I keep these on my bedroom and my bedroom's like the warmest room in the house so it's always consistently 25 degrees in my room anyway so that's fairly warm you know unless I have like the window open all day and even then it gets down to maybe about 20 degrees so yeah try and keep these somewhere where it's not you know it won't get really cold try somewhere that won't get below like 20 degrees because you know they might not like it they might not appreciate it very much also try to keep them away from like cold drafts so about humidity i know everyone makes a big deal about these guys loving humidity and i don't find that so i have i had i mean these guys like this is just how they live that that's how they sit on the shelf they they don't have anything special now I didn't put these guys in here because of humidity, I actually just put them in here because of aesthetics. That being said, like this does obviously retain a bit more humidity than, you know, than being out in the open. You can put them in a terrarium if you want, you can put them in like the bio orb, you can, you know, put them under a cloche if that's what you want to do, it's up to you. But in my experience, if, you've keep, if you keep your jewel orchids hydrated, then humidity isn't a big deal. It's not essential to have high humidity to keep these guys. So if you are worried about, oh my god, I can't provide them with that, or you know, you think you have to put them in a terrarium, you don't. You can just leave them in their pot out wherever they are, and they will be fine as long as you keep them like watered enough. <laughs> as long as you keep this medium moist, 
they will do fine. They will not require like so much, you know, 100% humidity. So I fertilise these guys every two weeks during the growing season. I'd say, you know, fertilise anywhere between two to three weeks. Weak, a weaker solution than you would your normal house plants. You could also do your fertilizer as a foliage spray as opposed to you know watering them in. So depending on what kind of situation you have, you can just literally spray the entire leaves with your fertilizer and that will work just as good as like watering them in. So yeah, you have some options there. As to what fertilizer to use, I did used to use an orchid fertilizer. Now I use like a multi-purpose kind of fertilizer that has like all the ingredients, you know, all like the macro and the micronutrients in it. They're doing well with it. But I mean, obviously if you have a lot of houseplants anyway, you should have a multi-purpose fertilizer. But again, you know, dilute it. Don't, you know, give it what it says in the bottle. So yeah, like you can see, this is probably a stem propagation. You would just look for a node so you know where the leaves are growing and you would cut just below that, stick it in spag. I mean, I know people put it in water. I've not actually propagated a jewel orchid yet because you know, mine is still, well, except for this one. They're all still quite small. So, you know, I will try it eventually when they grow a bit bigger. They do flower and they do bloom. They are orchids. Uh, I think, depending on the genus, you know, they all have very similar flowers. Some of the flowers can vary in colour and vary in size. If they flower, great. If they don't, you know, don't, like, don't worry about it. You know, we're not growing these for the flowers, or at least I'm not. I'm growing them for the foliage. So this one, like I said earlier, it's got a flower spike in it. I actually might just plop that out because when they do get flower spikes, they send up this really long... Uh, stem and the flowers are then up here and then you're left with all of this and then your plant isn't very bushy anymore It will just continue to kind of grow leggy like that and I'm I'm not about that I don't want like a leggy jewel orchid. I'd like a nice little bushy one but I do experience that these grow quite slowly. They're not a fast grower So I've had these guys about six seven months because I got one before the other So I've had these about six seven months and they were like, you know half the size well, I wouldn't say half the size, but they were a lot smaller than what they are now and they have put on growth But not as much as like I would have expected. They do take their time to produce these really gorgeous lightning leaves These guys can have all the pests. I had thrip on them. I've had spider mites I'm not sure about aphids, uh, but fungus gnats as well, obviously I mean, they're not really like a pest pest, but you know, I've had them in the soil obviously because it is a moist medium They do like that so yeah, thrip and spider mite, they are obviously like normal orchids more susceptible to spider mites. I just, you know, spray them with a bug spray and that works. So yeah, you know, they're not toxic, so if your pets do happen to nibble on them, they won't have to take a visit to the vet anytime soon. So that is kind of like my in-depth, long, chatty guide <laughs> into jewel orchid care. Obviously, like I said, this is my experience with these jewel orchids that I have, again, there are so many variations out there, there are so many different ones out there, so some of them do have a bit more, you know, difficult requirements, some of them, you know, do like to just have high humidity and, you know, need specific conditions to grow in, but these ones, like I said, the more kind of common ones that you can get, at least here in Europe, are the kind of easy care, I guess you could say, out of all the jewel orchids, at least that I have experience with, so... Yeah, I hope this helped you. If you have any more questions, let me know down below. I think I need a tea. <laughs> my throat's kind of hurting after all of this talking. Oh my lord. I talk too much. I do. I do. But yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe, you're more than welcome to. Have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and I'll catch you guys soon with another one.